Hello and welcome back to another PC build and today I'm going to be showing you how to build an all MSI gaming PC but I'm not going to be stopping there because MSI have also hooked me up with all the gear we're going to need to build the ultimate MSI gaming setup so let's get building. For the motherboard I'm going to be using the MSI Z690 Edge Wi-Fi and this is a high-end motherboard it's got a 16 plus 1 plus 1 power design we've got really beefy heat sinks over the VRM connected up with a heat pipe so we're going to be able to get the most from our CPU. The motherboard features DDR5 up to a maximum of 6400 MHz. We've got a PCIe Gen 5 slot, so we're ready for the new graphics cards when they come out. We've got four M.2 slots and some great looking ARGB effects on the motherboard. To install our CPU, we need to open the slot cover by pushing the lever down and out and all the way to the top, and then we can open up the cover. For our CPU, I'm going to be using Intel's 12th Gen i7, the 12700K. This is a 12 core CPU. We've got 8 performance and 4 efficient cores and a maximum clock speed of up to 5 gigahertz. So it should perfect pairing for our high-end motherboard. So to install our CPU, all we want to do is set it into the socket with the text the correct way up. There's little notches at the top and the bottom which we need to line up. We can then close the cover down, apply a little bit of pressure here, and the black bit of plastic tends to pop off. We'll put that in the motherboard box so we don't lose it, and then we can close the slot cover. Next we need to install our M.2 SSD, and MSI have hooked me up with their Spadium M480 Play in 2TB capacity. This is a Gen 4 drive with blistering fast read speeds of up to 7000 megabytes per second and write speeds of up to 6800 megabytes per second. And it has an endurance rating of 1400 terabytes written. And it comes with this really nice beefy aluminium heatsink which should help it to run the cool. So although our motherboard features four Gen 4 M.2 SSD slots, the top one goes to the CPU while the bottom three go via the chipset. So we should install our drive in the top slot and we're going to need to remove the heatsink. To install our drive, all we need to do is set it into the slot at a slight angle, flatten it down, and again, one of the really cool things MSI do with their motherboards is they include these clips for securing the M.2 SSD. So to secure our drive, all we need to do is push the clip over, and that's going to secure our drive in place, which is so much more convenient than using screws. So because our drive is this really beefy aluminium heatsink, we're not going to need to return the original heatsink. If you get the version of the drive that doesn't come with the aluminium heatsink, all you would need to do is put the original heatsink back on top. We're going to need to take care to install our RAM in the crank slots. We've only got two sticks. We're going to want to install them in the second and fourth one along from the CPU. So we'll open the clips on the motherboard. We can then line our RAM up with the slots. Once we're happy, we've got everything lined up. It's just some firm pressure for the RAM and it's going to clip into place. And then same thing with our second stick. Line it up with the slot and again some firm pressure to get it to clip into place. So for RAM, I've installed 32 gigabytes of Kingston Fury based RGB DDR5 at 5600 MHz and we've still got loads of room in this motherboard if you need more RAM. You can install up to a maximum of 128 gigabytes and at speeds of up to 6400 MHz overclocked. It's much easier to install the backplate for our CPU cooler while the motherboard is out of the case. So we're going to make sure all these clips are pulled to their outer setting, then line it up with the holes on the back of the motherboard. And then we've got one of these standoffs to screw on to each corner. For the case we're going to be using the MSI Velox 100R, it has four ARGB fans pre-installed, three at the front, one at the rear, a built-in ARGB controller, and a button to control the fans on the top. And with tempered glass panels on both the side and the front, we're going to get a great look at these fans. We're also not going to have any problems filling our hardware in the case. We can install a 360mm radiator, both at the front and at the top. And if you want to go with an air cutter, CPU cutters up to a maximum height of 175mm are supported. If you prefer to install your graphics card vertically, you'll be pleased to hear the case comes with a vertical GPU bracket. To open the tempered glass side panel, we've got a door handle at the front. We can open it up and lift the panel up to remove it. Just before we remove our other side panel, you'll notice we've got this vented area here, and that's because you can actually mount two fans on the side of the case. To remove the panel, we need to loosen the captive thumb screws at the back, slide the panel backwards, and lift away. Next, we can set our motherboard into the case, line it up with the standoffs at the back, and then we'll get it screwed into place with nine screws from the accessory bag. Next, we're going to want to get our case cables plugged in. The header down the bottom left-hand side of the motherboard is for our HD audio cable. So we'll bring it up through the cutout at the bottom and get it plugged into place. We're going to need to plug in the ARGB header coming from our case's built-in hub, and we've got a header just here. We've got three fan headers here in the middle of the motherboard, so I'm going to bring the cable coming from our rear fan through, 
and get it plugged in. And beside that, we can plug two of our front fans in as well. Just to the right, we've got another header for our final front fan. And then at the bottom right hand side of the motherboard, we've got our front panel connectors. Take care to follow the diagram in the motherboard manuals to make sure you plug the pins into the right headers. Our USB 3.0 cable is going to go into this header here, so we'll bring it through the cutout, line it up with the header, and push into place. And then our Type-C cable is going to go just below that. So just before we go any further, I want to point out a few things at the back of the case. So this is the case that was built in ARGB hub. You'll notice that the ARGB cable coming from our four pre-installed case fans is already plugged into the hub, as well as the ARGB cable coming from our LED lighting strip on the front of the case. We've got one spare ARGB header, but also coming from each of our spare fans, we've got an additional ARGB header where we can plug another ARGB device in and daisy chain it in. Just over to the right of our ARGB hub, we've got two dedicated two and a half inch drive mounting brackets. And then down at the bottom of the case, we've got a hard drive cage. And this is where you're gonna find the case accessory bag. So I'm not planning on installing any hard drive, so I'm going to remove the drive cage. To do that, there's two screws in the bottom we need to loosen, and then we can simply remove the hard drive cage. For the power supply, I'm going to be using the MSI A1000G, and as you can see, this is a fully modular power supply, meaning that none of the power cables are plugged in, which is great because we're only going to need to plug in the cables that we're going to need, making cable management so much easier. So this is a premium power supply. It's got a thousand watts, which is definitely more than what we're going to need for the build, but it's really useful to have that increased headroom should you want to upgrade the system at a later stage. And as new hardware comes out, it's definitely getting more power hungry. So being a premium power supply, it features premium components and it uses 105 degree Japanese capacitors and it has a rating of 80 plus gold. The other really cool thing this power supply has is a zero fan button. So we go ahead and enable this. Whenever the power supply is running at less than 40% of its maximum load, it enables the zero fan mode. So the fan stops spinning, which is significantly going to reduce the noise in the build. And that's definitely what we're going to want to have turned on. So that's all our cables plugged in. I've plugged in our 24 pin cable, two 8 pin EPS cables, three 8 pin PCIe cables, and a SATA cable. And the other thing is I plugged in some red and black cable extensions for our 24 pin and PCIe cables. We can then slide the power supply into the case and all the way to the back and making sure the fan is facing down the way. And then we'll get it screwed into place at the back with four screws from the accessory bag. We can then get our EPS cables plugged into the headers at the top left of the motherboard. And our 24 pin cable is going to go into this header here. So we'll bring it through the cutout, line it up with the header and push into place. We've got some cable comes on the cable to help organize the cable. Next thing to do is start work on our CPU killer, and I've gone for the Meg Core Liquid S36. This is a 360 millimeter AIO, and it's also available in a 280 millimeter version. Out of the box is compatible with both LGA 1700 and AM5 sockets. The top feature with this AIO is the 2.4 inch IPS display, where you can display your system information. You can put whatever photo or video you want on it, you can also set it to a clock or even have it set to the weather. So looking forward to testing this out. We've also got a 60 millimeter pump embedded fan, which is designed to help cool the components around the water block. For example, your VRM and your M.2 SSDs. It comes with these very nice silent gate P120 fans, which should be nice and quiet, particularly given that the AIO has a zero fan mode. So when the system's under low load, it actually shuts the fans down completely. So just before we move on with the installation, we can actually remove this cover that goes over the top of the screen. First, we can set our fans onto the radiator and then we'll get them screwed into place with the included long radiator screws. We can remove the magnetic dust filter at the top of the case. We can then set our AIO into the case, line it up with the top. We can then secure the AIO into place at the top with the short radiator screws. Then we can pass the cables coming from our fans through to the back. We can add some thermal paste to the center of the CPU. We can then lower our CPU cooler down into place, lining it up with the bracket beneath. We're then going to put a thumb screw onto each corner. You'll notice we've got three cables that actually come from the bottom of the pump. And what I have done is I've just put these underneath the bracket before screwing them in, which has mean all the cables are going to come up towards the top of the case and make everything look nice and tidy. We've only got one wire to plug at the front. It's onto our CPU fan header here. So we'll get the cable plugged in at the top. 
And then what I'm going to do is bring all the other cables through to the back. We can then replace the I.O. cover. We can then bring the USB cable coming from the pump through the cutout at the bottom. And I've got two USB 2.0 headers down at the bottom of the motherboard to plug it into. At the back of the case, we've got a triple fan splitter cable coming from our pump that we need to plug the three fans on the radiator into. We have also got a SATA cable coming from the pump and we need to plug this into a SATA cable coming from our power supply. As well, we've got a SATA cable coming from our case's built-in ARGB controller and we'll just plug that into another header on the SATA cable coming from our power supply. For the graphics card, we're going to be using the RTX 3080 Gaming X Trio. The card features MSI's Torx Fan 4.0 to ensure we get maximum error pressure. The core pipe has been designed to give maximum contact with the GPU and spread the heat over the whole heat sink for maximal cooling. And the card also features airflow control to distribute the airflow to the areas it's needed but prevent any turbulent airflow helping reduce the noise. And because we've gone with an all MSI build, we're going to be able to use Mystic Light to control the lighting on the graphics card as well as everything else in the build. So it's really going to simplify things. One RGB software package to control everything. And as this is a pretty large card with a triple fan setup, MSI have included a GPU support bracket, which I'll show you how to install in a minute. To install our graphics card, we're going to need to remove the second and third expansion slot cover. Then we can open the clip with the top PCIe slot. We can line our graphics card up with the slot. And then once we're happy everything's lined up, it's just some firm pressure to the graphics card and it's gonna clip into place. We can then use the two screws we've just removed to secure the graphics card into place. So this is our GPU support bracket. I'll show you how to install it now. And it probably is worth doing it given that this is a fairly large card and we do want to prevent it sagging. So to do that, we're gonna to need to remove all the screws apart from the top two. We can then slide the GPU support bracket into place. And then we're going to put the screw through the bracket back into the graphics card. I'm then going to slide the bracket to where I'm happy that it's providing support for the GPU and then tighten it up. And then we can put the middle bracket screw in and we should be able to replace the screw in the bottom PCIe slot. We can then bring our PCIe cables through the cutout at the bottom and get them plugged into our graphics card. And then we can tidy up the cables using the included cable combs. The last thing to do is some cable management. So that's the setup complete and I think it looks absolutely amazing. You'll notice I've gone ahead and set the PC up off camera because I've already done a full step-by-step -step build guide using this exact motherboard. It covers everything from installing Windows, drivers, RGB software, entering the BIOS, updating the BIOS, adjusting the BIOS settings, adjusting the fan curves. So if you don't know how to do that, you'll find a link to that video in the description. And let's get on to something more interesting. First thing I want to do is show you how to change the screen on our I.O. because I think this is one of the biggest features of our build. So we open the MSI Center, click on Features, click on Core Liquid. At the moment, you'll see I've set a video stroke image and we've got the MSI Dragon dancing in the middle. Um, you can upload an image. I've uploaded my image here. If I click on it and then click Apply and take a look at the I.O., you'll notice that my image has now appeared on the screen and MSI have loaded some default image and video files. The other option you can have is to have this as a hardware monitor. So we open the hardware monitor up. You can choose what you want displayed. So I've got CPU frequency, temperature, GPU usage, liquid temperature, and frames per second, and click apply. So you can see now the screen in the I.O. is working between all the different display items, and you can adjust what's displayed by picking the options here. You're allowed up to five, but you can have just one if you prefer. You've also the option to have a custom banner. We can have the system clock, so I'll show you what that looks like. Or the fifth option you can have, which is pretty cool, you can actually have live weather on the display itself. So we'll try that out. 
So I think for now I'll go back and display the hardware information. Two more things to show you before we leave. If you first install your AIO and it's not displaying the screen the correct way up, you can click on the direction and adjust it to whatever way you have it orientated and then click save. And the final thing I want to show you before moving on is how we can adjust the fan settings. So we can adjust the fans on the radiator, the pump and the water block fan. Um, at the moment I've got them set to balance mode. We can click the silent mode which has a zero fan mode for the fans on the radiator and also the fan on the AIO but the pump is going to keep running. And we've got a gaming mode which is going to ramp things up. Um, and we can customize the fan curves ourselves. For the moment, I'm going to leave things on the balance mode. I also want to show you the case's built-in ARGB lighting. We've got an LED button on the top of the case, and if we press it, it will adjust the RGB on the fans or anything that we have plugged into the ARGB controller at the back of the case. And we've got a whole variety of different colors and different effects built in. If we hold this button for three seconds, it will sync up with the motherboard. As I hold it, the lights will flash, and when I let go, I've got the motherboard lighting set to red, so that's why it's going to sync up with the motherboard. So Ida64 has been running for just over 10 minutes, and the maximum CPU temperature was 91 degrees, and the maximum GPU 69, which are both very acceptable. The CPU does run quite hot, and particularly with an AIO set to exhaust at the top, it'll run a little bit hotter with an AIO set to intake. Noise levels recorded 49 decibels, uh, 30 centimeters away from the closed tempered glass panel. So again, fairly reasonable. So now we come on to the bit I've been looking forward to. Let's test out the gaming performance. So all games were tested at a resolution of 2560 by 1440 and with high graphics settings. So starting off with Far Cry 6, we had an average frame rate of 141. In Assassin's Creed Valhalla, using the game's built-in benchmark, we had an average frame rate of 103. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, again using the game's built-in benchmark, we had an average frame rate of 197. And in Fortnite, we had an average frame rate of 151. So I want to finish off by sharing my thoughts on the gaming peripherals I've used for the setup. And if you see anything you like, you'll find links to it in the description. So starting off with the monitor, this is the Artemis 273CQRX QD. And this is a 27 inch wide Quad HD monitor with a 240Hz refresh rate and 1 millisecond response time. The monitor features Quantum Dot technology, covers 92% of the Adobe RGB and 95% of the DCI P3. So in terms of using the monitor, the colours were really vivid and looked absolutely great on it. The 100R curve that the monitor has was really immersive and it felt like you were in the game. And again, I'm not used to having a 240Hz monitor. I play on a 120Hz monitor and I really could tell the difference. The other thing that I found really useful was the headset holder on the side. The keyboard is the Vigor GK71 Sonic, which features light and linear MSI Sonic red switches, which I find were really responsive when gaming and a really nice audible click. I really liked the clear keycaps, which meant you could see the RGB shining through. And using the memory foam rest, I was able to get in a really comfortable position when gaming. The mouse is the clutch GM41 lightweight wireless. And at only 74 grams and with the PTFE feet, it slid nicely over the mouse mat. It was light and easy to use and very comfortable in the hand. The mouse can be used in both wireless and wired mode. It comes with a desktop charger and can charge from 0 to 100% in 90 minutes and a full charge will give you up to 80 hours of use. The headset is the immersive GH30 V2 and the large 40mm drivers give great sound quality and volume. I find the headset was comfortable and lightweight to wear. And it was good to see it came with a 3.5mm splitter cable and a detachable microphone. The microphone is the MSI Immersive GV60, which records high quality digital audio at 24 bit and 96 hertz. The microphone features four different patterns which can be adjusted on the microphone depending on the situation. It's got a 3.5mm headphone jack for real time monitoring, and although it comes with a really attractive stand, it can also be mounted on a boom arm. So I've really enjoyed putting this setup together and a big thank you to MSI for sending everything out. So if you see something you like either in the desk setup or the PC, you'll find links to everything in the description. And if you have enjoyed the video, please remember to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not currently subscribed, please hit the subscribe button as well. I think I'm going to continue to test out this PC's gaming performance. So I'll see you in the next video.